Dharma Arta for spiritual advancement. Uttama Slokam, the Supreme Lord, or persons attached to the Supreme Lord. Tantu, for offspring. Tanvan, and for their protection. Pitrin, the residence of Pitri Loka. Jajit, must worship. Raksakama, one who desires protection. Punyajanan, pious persons. Ojakama, one who desires <coughs> strength should worship. Madhudganan, the demigods. Translation. One should worship Lord Vishnu or his devotee for spiritual advancement in knowledge and for protection of heredity and advancement of a dynasty. One should worship the various demigods. Purport. The path of religion entails making progress on the path of spiritual advancement, ultimately, ultimately reviving the eternal relation with Lord Vishnu in his impersonal effulgence, his localized Paramatma feature, and ultimately his personal feature by spiritual advancement in knowledge. And one who wants to establish a good dynasty and be happy in the progress of temporary bodily relations should take shelter of the Peters and the demigods in other pious places. Such different classes of worshippers of different demigods may ultimately reach the respective planets of those demigods within the universe, but he who reaches the spiritual planets in the Brahma Jyoti achieves the highest perfection. Om Jnana Timaranasya Gyanandana Salakaya Sakshurun Militam Yena just my Sri Gurave Namaha Sri Chaitana Mano Vistam Sapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Sri Guru Sri Yuta Padakamalam Sri Gurun Vaisnavamscha Sri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunatan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Saitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Sivisakan Vitam Scha He Krishna Karuna Sindho Dinabando Jagatpate Gopesa Gopi Kakanta Radha Kanta Namastute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vindavaneshwari Visabhanu Sutta Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vanchakalpa Trubhyacha Kripa Sindhubhyevacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaisnavibhyo Namo Namaha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadar Sri Vasadi Gaura Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So a distinction is made. For spiritual advancement, we are worshipping the Supreme Lord, Lord Vishnu or Krishna. And if we want protection of our dynasty and so on, then we should worship various demigods. Um, these things are very deep. Uh, we are our family members are dear to us. And really, when, it, when that gets involved, uh, then uh, spiritual philosophy is far away. 
suddenly. It's in the background. It happens so easily. Um, so Bhagavatam is in different ways, again and again, reminding us of this, of, of the real eternal goal. Um, and therefore, one should never think that we possess anything in this world, not even our children. Uh, our children, they are simply independent from us, living beings on their own destiny, who are placed under our care for some time. That's, that's all. It's not that they are part of us. Right? Uh, something of me lives in this child. That's illusion. In terms of, you know, genetically, that can be proven, though. Uh, genetically, fine. But we have, the genes have nothing to do with us. Absolutely nothing. Nothing to do with our identity. They are simply part of, of our bodies. But the soul uh, is not determined by genetic codes in any way. Uh, the soul is completely aloof. And therefore, why single out one living entity over another and getting very affectionate towards one particular living entity and not affectionate towards others? Uh, yes, it may be if it is based on devotional service, then that criterion is right. Uh, that we feel particularly affectionate towards one living being because that living being is, is very much eager to serve Krishna. That is when we are free from illusion. But otherwise, uh, when we are bound by all kinds of different affections in this world, deep, emotional, very strong, we feel it so strong. Uh, if, if it is to temporary relationships, then we are in illusion. We are in Maya. Um, It has its root cause in the fact that we rebelled against Krishna. And Srila Prabhupada stated that spiritual life means surrender. Um, there is no question, no question of spiritual life without surrender. He said, just like in the darkness, uh, in the darkness you cannot find the sun. You can go looking in the darkness, where is the sun, where is the sun? It must be somewhere. But in the darkness, you cannot find the sun. In the same way, in the conditioned state, one cannot find Krishna. It's not possible. One may look here and there and everywhere, but purity is the condition. And purity means that we must, we must just take our shelter in service to Krishna and nothing else. Uh, and all other things, it's so difficult to surrender can be translated as, it is so difficult to stop being rebellious, basically. It's so difficult to just stop being rebellious against, against Krishna. Why? Why do I have to accept his supremacy? Why? Why? I feel forced. Why? Why isn't Krishna leaving it up to us? Why? Is there suffering in the material world? I think he's trying to force us into serving him. Is it? A little bit. Uh, why? Because Krishna is impatient. Out of love. How long does he have to wait for us to say yes, 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 yes. Just now coming. Just now. Uh, and not coming at all. Uh, not coming at all. Not coming to serve him at all. No, no, just not coming. Yes, 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 yes. And we just don't do it. Uh, Prabhupada tells the story about this Kali worshipper uh, who, who goes to Kali for some benediction and to solve some material problem and promises to offer a goat. And the material problems are solved, but no goat. So one day, the worshipper goes back to the, the temple and Kali says, where is my goat? Say, oh, Kali, what can I do? The prices are, are so high these days, economy and everything, it's really bad. I just can't afford a goat. All right, all right, all right, offer me a fly. So I can, next day, still no fly. He said, 
You didn't even offer me a fly. I said, oh, you know, Kali, it's so difficult to catch a fly. But you have many hands, so for you it might be much easier. So why don't you catch the fly yourself? Uh, so, all right, this is a gross comparison, uh, the comparison of worship of Kali, which is ghastly, where we are offering goats and flies. But the point, the mentality is what we are interested in. We can see, we can recognize this mentality in ourselves. Laziness, uh, laziness. Do I have to all the way bow down when I walk in and out of the temple? I was just in there. Three minutes ago, I bowed down. Then I forgot something in my coat. So I went outside, came back in, and just pranams. I waved my fingers extra to show the surrender. Uh, cheap, cheap. We want to make it cheaper. Cheaper and cheaper. 16 rounds, oh, I can chant only 12. Come on. A difference of four rounds you cannot make. Oh, no. Only 12 I can do. Come on. Four little rounds. Uh, what is it? No, it takes me a very long time to chant rounds. Oh, yeah, somehow or other. Why? Huh? Otherwise, when you talk about all kinds of other things, you talk very fast. Maybe it's because your mind between each mantra goes up and down to the moon, right? That it takes so long. Hare Krishna, moon and stars, heavenly planets, Hare Krishna. Oh, and what's on my phone? Krishna. Mm. Oh. oh, okay. <laughs> Krishna. <laughs> What? What are you saying? Oh, very interesting. Yes. Tell me more about it. Hare. Oh, yes. Anybody home? Hare. God, so hard to chant the holy name. I don't know what it is. I just can't get through my rounds. Somehow or other. Oh. But Prabhupada said the name. He said it all begins with the name. Uh, in this world also. What is your name? Uh, what's your name? We ask everyone, what is your name, the holy name? You have to somehow or other purify the tongue and chant the name of the Lord. Uh, then Prabhupada says, but some impersonalists say the Lord has no name. Uh, but Prabhupada said, but that is defeated by the Vedanta Sutra. Because the Vedanta Sutra says, Chamadi Asiyataha. Everything has its origin in the Supreme Lord. And there are names everywhere. Every dog and cat have a name, right? Everything has a name. Uh, what is this book? It's also a name. It's a designation. But then you say, no, the absolute truth is near guna, has no qualities, no designation. Uh, but everything has designation. All designations have the origin in, in, in the Supreme Lord. So he, So therefore he has a name, many names, as we know because he has many designations, yes, many forms, unlimited forms, um, but also impersonal energy, why not? Um, just as in this previous chapter here in Srimad Bhagavatam, we got the description of the universal form, uh, and we can see how Krishna is behind everything, and the sun and the moon are like his eyes, and so on. The, the, the Himalaya mountain ranges are like his spine, like the bones in his spine. And like this, we see descriptions of the universal form. And Prabhupada said, that is also Krishna. He said, but that is not the lovable form of Krishna. Uh, how can you love the universal form? It's difficult. Uh, very too big, too large, too overwhelming. Uh, it's difficult. How can, can a human being get close to an ant? It is difficult. If you keep a pet and you have an ant, uh, which one? Uh -huh. <laughs> All right, no problem. You put some dye on this ant. You paint its legs, right? So, okay, you can see. Here's an ant with green legs. That's mine. Uh, no problem. Uh -huh. Solve that problem. But even then, you want to pet it. Oops, there went one of the legs. <laughs> what to do? <laughs> My lovely little ant. Uh, it's very, it's, it, how can we have a relationship? Uh, 
One is too small, the other is too big, too, too much different in size. In the same way, the universal form of the Supreme Lord is too big. Prabhupada said, how can you dress him? Where do you get all the cloths? Uh, so, it is a problem. But where is Krishna? The most wonderful thing is that the Supreme Personality of Godhead appears in a human-like form and then becomes very accessible. And he acts also in a human-like way. So, his, his nature is close to our nature. In that way, he's close to our heart. Uh, if, if, yeah, if God has a totally different nature than we have, how can I understand him? How can I appreciate him? But because he is so close, we can develop that, that love and affection or envy and think, I'm as good as he is. Uh, I can take his place and rebel. So the choice is ours. Uh, the choice is ours to surrender or not. But surrender is required um, because surrender basically means to, to give up all these material relationships. Uh, when we turn away from Krishna, we enter into endless material relationships, millions. It starts as a kid. This toy, that toy, all these things, my home, uh, even my mother is my slave. Uh, when you're a child, uh, the, the universe centers around you, right? That's it. And if it's not exactly the way you want it, you scream and cry and demand it. Yeah, that is the selfishness is there, the self-centeredness. When we are adults, the self-centeredness is no less, right? It is exactly the same. We're just a little more sophisticated about it. Uh, so we hide it behind some, some generosity. Can I help you? I hate helping other people. Can I help you? Oh, yes. I help you so that you are obliged to help me when I need you. While I'm helping you, I'm always helping you. And now you can't do anything for me because I realize that I need some people at, at times of trouble. Right? Therefore... Oh yes, how are you? Are you feeling well? Is your cold getting better? Right? Really, are you feeling better now? I hope so. After I gave you the Chinese dragon bomb last night. Huh? <laughs> you feeling better now? <coughs> yes. So that next time when I have a cold and I can just go <laughs> and he will immediately say, Oh Maharaj, are you not well? In this way we have a pact, right? When I go like, he says, oh, you have a toothache. Oh, 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 is it bad? And I say, yes, very bad. Oh, 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 God, you're suffering so much. Yes, you're right. I'm suffering the most in the whole universe. Yes, you're suffering the most in the whole universe. And the next time it's his turn. Oh, you're suffering so much. Ah, I feel so much better. Somebody understands my suffering. In this way we have a pact to support each other's lamentation. Lament, lament, lament. Sympathy, sympathy, sympathy. Uh, and then it's my turn for lament, lament, lament. And then you give the sympathy. And this is called love or mushy in the middle, right? What shall I say? False sentiment, right? The truth of the matter is that we are sinful rats. <laughs> the truth of the matter is we are selfish, hard-hearted creatures, and you deserve that cold all the way. And you're lucky you get off light, you criminal, right? You got a diminished reaction, yes? for poking your nose into things that are not your business. you got to suffer from this nose. That's all it is, stubbornly sinful. That's why you're suffering. So, that's the truth. <laughs> Years ago, Bhavananda did that to me. I was in Vrindavan, and I had just had malaria, and I had lost, I'd lost 15 kilos in two days, you know. And I was sitting on a chair, like sort of 
totally finished, right? Feeling very sorry for myself. I'm so sick. God, I'm so sick. And Bhavananda walks past and he looks at me and he says, You, you are so sinful. <laughs> I still remember that. <laughs> Bav has a way <laughs> yeah, in these things, right? as they say. Yes, well, what to do? <clears throat> but, okay, I had to admit it, it was true. I couldn't get around it, that was the thing. I felt it was a bit harsh, right, at that time. But at the same time, it was true. It was true. All this, this malaria was simply the result of my own impious activities. And really, as, as I'd taken up devotional service, it was even a diminished reaction. Can you iman imagine what pile of sinful of, of reaction was really there? If you think about it. Uh, so this is true, this is Srimad Bhagavatam. It is, Srimad Bhagavatam is talking in the same way. Srimad Bhagavatam is also telling us, you are so sinful. Uh, start owning up to your, your problems. Uh, in other words, appreciate that we ourselves are bringing these things upon ourselves. St get out of the victim role, right? Poor me, I am a victim. But no, that's actually not the appropriate position. That is false ego. Uh, that is false ego. So in that way, it's a little, uh, a little heavy sometimes, a little strong, the absolute truth. Uh, but that is Krishna's mercy. The, 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 strong, the strong elements of the material world of heaviness and of suffering, that is the symptom of Krishna's strong love. Uh, if, if you really love your son, adult, let's say, teenager, right, puberty and everything, you love him, but at the same time he's totally off. Right? And, uh, but what can you do? What can you do? Uh, uh, names with health, but there was one son who grew up in Krishna consciousness who went to a party and got drunk to a point where he had to be brought home by an ambulance. Right? Uh, <laughs> names withheld. Right? And the insurance uh, wouldn't pay the bill for, th for such cases. Right? So, and uh, the parents said, sorry, sorry, it's your bill. We're not paying. And it's a big bill for an ambulance, right? So suddenly he had a big debt. Yeah, you know, so wow, so heavy. So heavy, no. One has to, has to learn to take responsibility for one's actions. It's a child who doesn't take responsibility for the actions. But an adult is meant to, to take responsibility. How many lifetimes are we going to remain children? 80-year-old um, children, and then next life again. Uh, when will we actually become mature and accept responsibility for our actions? Uh, that is, is dharma. Uh, that is the path of dharma. To, uh, this may sound, sound heavy, uh, but it sounds only heavy to those who are rebellious. See? It sounds heavy to those who have a heavy case of rebelliousness. <laughs> no, actually, no, of course, I want to surrender, um, but I just can't surrender. Translates in, I don't want to surrender. Right? If you say, of course, I want to surrender, but I can't surrender, actually, that means I don't, I don't want to surrender at all. I don't want it. And I'm just looking for any damn excuse I can find not to surrender. So, to get you off my back, right, I say, I want to surrender, but I can't surrender. You see? Which, which translates, I don't want to. I don't want to. Unwillingness. Now, because we are all equally unwilling, huh? therefore, we're not going to get too much on everyone's case. 
That's not the point. See, this is not a lecture where I'm sitting here uh, as Mr. Surrendered Soul. Did you read my T-shirt? It's on that. Yeah, and 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 you guys, you know, you guys down there, you guys, get your act together, you know. And it's a Bhagavatam class this morning, and I decided to hit you hard over the head because I didn't sleep well anyway last night. So I thought, you know, I gotta get it good out at somebody, right? And I thought, why not at all you, since I'm sitting here and you're sitting down there, and I don't know what's wrong with you guys, you know, why don't you just surrender? Yeah, surrender, you know, yeah. Right? Get it together, huh? <laughs> like my Sankatan leader, um, who told me, you know, before going out, if you chant your 16 rounds, and when I said no, he said, you'll never be a Sankatan devotee. <laughs> oh my God, I'll never be a Sankatan devotee. What can I do? <laughs> it's just for the rest of my life, I'm struggling with this. Did I finish my 16 rounds? No, I didn't. And I came out of the room, oh God, I'll never be a Sankatan devotee. Surrender. Yeah. So this mantra of surrender has been around for a long time and it has been sometimes, you know, slapped into our face. I have seen another Sankatam leader, that wasn't mine, thank God, but who <laughs> took a little, little brahmachari, grabbed him by the neck. You know, he was twice the size of that brahmachari. <laughs> he took a skinny one, grabbed him by a neck by the neck and shook him around and said, surrender. <laughs> <laughs> so what can we do? What can we do? We are, um, so by force it may not work. Uh, it's army boot camp. Uh, I'm not particularly attracted to it myself. Right? I would really prefer something a little more gentle. And I really like this, uh, this new mantra, devotee care. <laughs> Especially when they care about me. <laughs> that part I like a lot. And I think I'm all, I vote for it. Devotee care, Prabhu's. We need more of that. <laughs> Especially this devotee needs a lot. <laughs> right. So I'm all for it. Um, no, but serious for a moment. Uh, so, when we say uh, surrender is required, we don't want to uh, enforce it, but, but what can we do? Uh, um, when we get too soft and too cushy amongst each other and say, it's all right that you're chanting only three and a half rounds. No, I understand, I understand. It's very difficult. It's very difficult. I find it also so difficult. I fully understand. Are you comfortable or, or do you feel traumatized by, by this? Shall I hold your hand for a while? No, really, to give you a sense of security. I mean, did you get your Mongol Arctic sweets today? Yes, no, Prabhuji, yes, really? I know, no, 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 you know, we really want this movement to give shelter to people and to be supportive and, you know, of course, you should chant 16, really, you should, you know, but I understand that you can't, you bum. <laughs> right. <laughs> You're gonna rot in the material world if you don't chant 16 rounds, right? What do you think, you know? You think you're gonna get it, get it for nothing, <laughs> right? What to do, what to do? It's not, I didn't invent the 16 rounds, it wasn't me, it wasn't me, right? It was actually Lord Chaitanya who told one day, to all the brahmanas who wanted to invite him to his home, that they had to be lakpatis. Lakpatis, what does that mean? Lakpati means you have to own a hundred thousand 
500 years, nowadays it's nothing. And you ask Madan Mohan, what is a lakh, a lakh? You know, he speaks crores. <laughs> <laughs> lakh, you know, crore, one crore, two crores. Now you're talking lakh, you know, that's a tip, right? But 500 years, a lakh uh, was what is a crore today. Yeah? So that was a lot. Now you say crorapati. Yeah? So who's a crorapati? Right? Crorapati, who's a lakh party 500 years ago? Nobody. So, so all the brahmanas, they were brahmanas. They were not so rich. Right? Brahmanas are not so rich. So what could he do? They could say no. No one could invite Mahaprabhu. Oh. Only a lakpati. And then he explained it. A lakpati means one who chants a hundred thousand names. Sixty-four rounds. Oh, so many. Uh, all the brahmanas started chanting. But when Srila Prabhupada said that the devotees should chant sixty-four rounds, they were like, uh, that was out of the question. And Prabhupada lowered the threshold. He lowered it to 16 rounds. And in that way, he lowered the threshold to the spiritual world. Uh, he made it easy for us. But then we say, oh, 16, can it be 15? Can it be 12? Can it be 11? Can it be 9? Oh, 6. 6. And 6 I can do easily every day. Yes, it fits. Uh, so it is still our rebelliousness. Uh, we don't want to take it as it is. We want to make it as we want. Uh, uh, and that's how it works. So this is, is the issue. And then, then we say, well, uh, I've changed my religion. Yes, I actually realized after a long time that Krishna consciousness wasn't it. Yeah, no, no. Initially, I, I had full faith. But then over the time, I saw that the people didn't live up to the, the standards, actually. And I saw it was a big farce, a big farce. And now, now I worship uh, Durga. Oh, you know, I'm going to church lately. Yes, yeah, I'm going to church. I'm very happy. I'm so happy. No, really. Yeah, I'm happy because now I can do any damn thing. <laughs> I don't have to follow the same rules anymore. I've, I have just given up Krishna consciousness and I'm taking on another philosophy with easier, easier standards. Great, and then I don't have to feel guilty about not surrendering. Because, and, and why are there so many religions in the world, Swamiji? That's what I want to ask you. So that, so that people can justify their material desires in the name of religion. That's it. That's why there are so many, so many different religions in the world. So that we can justify different material desires and just put a nice religious sugar coating over it so I feel so good about myself. It's all right to eat this animal. It's my religion. <laughs> Every Christmas. It's part of the religion. Mm. Too bad for the turkeys, <laughs> what to do. Uh, so in this way, justifying, justifying. So actually, that is actually the truth. Of course, don't say this in the next uh, interfaith uh, you know, uh, <laughs> exchange, right? But if you really look at it, that is what Srimad Bhagavatam is saying. Dharma projita kaitavo traparamo nirmat saranam satam vedam vastavam atasivandam shivadam tapam trayamudanam Srimad Bhagavate mahamune krite kimba pare ishvaraha sadharidi shushubi um, kriti beer shushubi tatksanat. I can still do it. It is said that it speaks about all this kaitava dharma, all this cheating religion, which is simply aiming at fulfilling material desires. And it doesn't matter, it's everywhere in the world. Everywhere in the world. Jai Jagadisa Hare. Right. What can we do? Uh, trying to satisfy, it is nice. We, we, we worship Jagadish, yes, we worship him. But unconditionally, unconditionally, uh, Jagat Isa, the Lord of the universe, we worship him, but unconditionally. 
So Prabhupada came to give that. Uh, sometimes firm, uh, not just soft, uh, definitely demanding. Uh, Prabhupada was demanding. Prabhupada was not just so, uh, so soft, so gentle, so hand-holding. He was also uh, quite demanding, difficult things, difficult things. Uh, but at the same time, uh, he was uh, full of love, full of inspiration, and and himself uh, doing so much more than everybody else that nobody could feel that that oh he's making us do so many things. Uh, he was taxing himself so much more. Uh, once Srila Prabhupada was traveling and he was in New York, and he developed this cold. You know, and you know how a cold goes through when you get a real cold, right? a serious one. It goes to different stages. And in the first stage, it's wet. Right? <laughs> you can hear it when someone has a real cold, when he speaks, he sputters and splutters. And then comes the dry stage of the cold, when the mucus dries up, and all the voice becomes hoarse and deep, and the nose is totally blocked, and you begin to speak with the sounds like this, and you can clearly hear it, yeah, that somebody has a serious cold. Right? So Prabhupada was going to the stages of a cold, and the lectures, you can listen to the recordings day after day, they went through that, the wet phase, the dry phase, and so on. And the devotees said, oh, Prabhupada, please, please stay here a little longer to recover. Prabhupada said, no, I have to go. I have to go to the UK. I have to go to London. And no, you can just stay here and rest. And, Prabhupada, and then Prabhupada said, uh, and the devotee said, yes, Prabhupada, just rest and, 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 and just look after yourself for some days. And Prabhupada said, when I just rest and look after myself, who will look after you? When I don't, don't travel, when I don't, don't preach, who will look after you? It's just like, uh, who was looking after who? Uh, Prabhupada was looking after everyone. Uh, devotee care. Oh yes, so much devotee care. Looking after everyone. Always there with some some in inspiring advice, uh, but not all soft and cushy and sentimental. Can I hold your hand? Are you well today? Did you sleep enough? Six hours is enough, right? All right, five to seven, right? Unless health is down, then it's another, then it's an exception. But normally, why so much sleeping, right? Sleeping, 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 sleeping. Prabhupada would, uh, would, would speak like that. <laughs> uh, a little intense for us. We feel pressure. We felt there is pressure. But it is not fanaticism. It is pressure with love. Because purity is required. Uh, purity is required. With it. As I said earlier, and I'll end now with that, is that when there's no purity, that means there's maya. And when there's maya, maya means darkness. And in the darkness, one can look everywhere, but one cannot see the sun. Uh. While looking, the owl... Uh, while looking, the non-devotee cannot see, as the owl cannot see the sun. Uh, he cannot see. So in the darkness, we cannot see the sun. Therefore, purity is required, and that takes surrender, because it doesn't come automatic. That's hard work. But that much hard work is needed. And that's why some prefer to worship the demigods. Uh, because it's easier and you get your benefits. It's not so easy to just give a whole life to Krishna. But it is the best. Prabhupada said, you want diamonds? 
You want diamonds? You must pay the price. Uh, if you want cheap glass imitation, yeah, very cheap. If you buy one dozen, no problem. You want some, some religion and at the same time follow, do any damn thing you want? Yes, we have it for you. There is enough out there in the religious marketplace. Uh, and Vyasadeva wrote so many things in the Vedas, but Narada Muni condemned it and said, why didn't you write about pure devotional service? And that is the topic that Vyasadeva then wrote about in Srimad Bhagavatam. And that is why we are this morning speaking in this way. Good morning. <laughs> Any questions? Any comments? Sometimes the devotees, I mean, sometimes the demigods are the devotees, also Krishna. So, sometimes the demigods are the devotees? The demigods are devotees of Krishna as well. So it says one should worship the Vishnu or his devotee for spiritual advancement. So can we worship the demigods for spiritual advancement? Oh, so, like a, you're reading the verse like a lawyer, <laughs> <laughs> looking for a book. Look, uh, uh, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah, you're basically talking about those who want to have a lawyer's mentality and read the scriptures to find loopholes. You will find them. You will make them. You will create them. But through that loophole, you yourself will slip out of spiritual life. And you yourself then will, uh, will, will not get Krishna. Uh, if he really... Uh, so one must take the spirit... Uh, and the spirit is one of surrender. And the demigods, yes, they are also devotees, but they're mixed devotees. When Maharaj Prithu and his queen, Queen Archie, uh, at the end of their life went to the forest, they engaged in pure devotional service. And then upon their due expiry, a plane came from Vaikuntha. And Maharaj Prithu boarded that plane. And then... His queen, Archie, boarded an other plane, and the planes ascended into the sky. And the demigods, they, they showered flowers when they saw all this, and they were just, just glorifying these devotees because they were devotees. And then the planes went up and up and up and reached the heavenly planets. And then they went up and up and up past the heavenly planets, and the, the, heavenly, and the demigods looked up until these planes went out of their sight. So, they are devotees, but not pure devotees, not, not yet ready to go back to the spiritual world. Uh, so therefore, no. No, one must follow the pure devotee. One must take shelter of the pure devotee. Uh, and that is this movement. This movement we are following a pure devotee and nothing else. It's a little difficult. You get the chance. Everyone gets a chance. Take it or leave it. At the end. It's up to you at the end of the day. Get a chance. Many take it for a while and then drop it again. It's not that everyone finishes his life in Krishna consciousness, yesterday there was one Mataji from Mayapur. And she says, oh, you remember me from Mayapur? I didn't. <laughs> no, so many years went by. I, I, I didn't, she didn't look like she looked in Mayapur. She looks totally different. <laughs> so it didn't match the picture in my mind, you know, which anyway was a little blurry. And then... Oh, ah, Mayapur Tiki Asti, ah, Balo Balo, huh? some Bangla. And then she says, yes, you bless me that I stay a devotee my whole life. And say, so she is from Mayapur. She is from Mayapur. Because that's typical, the spirit of Mayapur, just to just, just ask for blessings, to be a devotee the whole life. That spirit is what we need. It's not so easy to be a devotee the whole life. Uh, so this is, is, and then, while we're at it for the whole life, we may as well improve the quality. This is called surrender, see? Yeah. So, no, no demigod worship. 
I've seen also. I've seen lots, lots of things. If you know what I've seen. Oof. Any other question? Yes. Uh, all right. Why is it uh, to advance in Krishna consciousness? Why is it essential to come from Allah the world? Um, it's it's a big statement to say that it's a, that that you have to come to Mongol Arctic and that if you don't come to Mongol Arctic, you cannot make spi uh, spiritual advancement. But Mongol Arctic give you many blessings because Mongol Arctic happens quite early in the morning, right? One and a half hour before Brahma Muhurta. Basically, you are up while the world is still in deep sleep, in deep tamas, right? Rotting in ignorance. And you rise and take your bath and you go to the, to the temple and, and get this auspicious, this mango, this auspicious influence. When your mind is fresh in the morning, all this spiritual influence is in there, and then in the middle of the day, when everyone's awake, and when everyone is, is racing around to make money in some way or other, because that's what people do all day, uh, then, you know, you remember Radha Vallabha. Oh, Radha Vallabha. Uh, and even when your boss is sour, you know, think, yes, sour boss, Radha Vallabha. <laughs> <laughs> huh. huh. And everyone will say, what is this? You always seem to have some inspiration, something in you. Some, it, it, even, even on days when it's tough, you seem to be so inspired. Radha Vallabha. <laughs> Mangalati. That's why, that's why hell or high water when, even when it rains cats and dogs, you know, even when the wind almost blows your car off the road, you still come to the temple for Mangalati. Uh, because Radha Vallabha. That's why. Mm. Yes. Can someone get perfection without uh, chanting? Can someone get, not in this age of Kali, huh? It is the Yuga Dharma in this age of Kali. So perfection without chanting? No, not possible. You can make advancement without chanting. Right? By hearing chanting or by doing any service you make advancement. But perfection it is very clear. Harinama, 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 Evakevalam. Mm, you know the verse. So... There are plenty of verses in the scripture which establish that in this age of Kali you have to chant. Oh. But there are people who are looking for loopholes. Right? So, is it, uh, can't I just eat myself back to Godhead right? and take the Mahaprasadam, you know, Sapti and Puri every night? Uh, uh. <laughs> but, yeah, we want something else. We want something else. Uh, in, when Prabhupada was in England, uh, he said on one occasion, Krishna consciousness is so simple, you might just miss it. Right. So uh, that's an answer to that. The mind wants something else. Just chanting, you know, just, here is it. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare. Are we really going to do this all the time? I mean, nothing else. Can't we do something else? There's got to be something else you can do. Is there, is there another way, please? Oh, uh, the mind doesn't want it. It's too simple. Just chanting. Can we get some, like, learn some complicated pujas? <laughs> Yes, get my mind to it and chant some mantras, Sanskrit, Sanskrit. Ah, ah something intellectual to say, you know. No, do we really have to just sit? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. Hare Krishna. Huh. One, professor, one professor was visiting Radha Desh and he wrote an article about it and he wrote, said, in the morning, I, just before waking up, I dreamt I was in a beehive. <laughs> yeah. You 
see the point? The point? No. Without chanting, sorry, stay in the material world. What to do? Anyone else? Yes. Uh, of the chanting, you mentioned one physical affection through chanting. Um, is it through Java or Kirtan or both? Both. Both. Japa and Kirtan are both uh, are both really instituted by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Uh, in the uh, Chaitanya Chandramrita, it is described that Mahaprabhu used to chant on a string with knots. So for beats he was using a string with knots. So Sankhya Purva Ganama Gana Nati B, not only chanting, you know, I'm chanting, I'm always chanting. Yes, yes, when I'm cooking I'm chanting, yeah, I'm chanting Hare Krishna. When I'm driving I'm chanting, always in the shower I'm chanting. That's nice, but also Sankhya Purva Ganama Gana Nati B, one must not only chant, but one must chant a fixed number. A fixed number, and then whatever else you're chanting is extra chanting. So japa, uh, chanting a fixed number of rounds softly as we're chanting to ourselves, was there, also performed by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and instituted by Mahaprabhu uh, in his teachings to Sanatan Goswami. It's also mentioned Sankhya Purva Ganama Gananati Pi. Now the thing is this: in kirtan, you sit there, and there's a kirtan leader, and it's so sweet or so vibrant and dynamic and you know and everyone is like and then you just chant Hare Krishna and you're floating on the wave of of everybody's energy and but when you're ja when during japa during japa we get exposed for what we are <laughs> during, uh, at, during japa we're separating the man from the boys during japa uh, we're seeing who what you really what taste you really have what bhakti you really have it comes out hare hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 rama hare rama Rama, Rama, Hare, Hare. Oh, okay. So in, in Japa we are exposed. That's why Japa is, is a little more difficult than Kirtan. Mm. But also essential that we anchor ourselves every morning at Krishna's lotus feet. Savai mana Krishna padara vindayo to fix the mind at Krishna's lotus feet. Uh. So, and then Gradually we become filled, the emptiness, the vacuum in our hearts becomes filled with Krishna. And then we become really fixed at Krishna's feet. And that's, um, it is said, that's the meaning of the word guru, which means heavy. means one, he is so f heavy that he cannot be moved from Krishna's lotus feet. Mm. So that's what we have to become. So japa is needed. Mm. Mm -hmm. Maharaj, what does it mean to be fully surrendered? What does it mean to be fully surrendered? Um, there is no limit to, to appreciate that there is no limit to it. It is said that uh, even, even the, the perfect devotees in the spiritual world are eternally increasing their love for Krishna. Even Radharani's love for Krishna is eternally increasing. So eternally to em embrace Krishna consciousness more and more. See, in the beginning, you embrace something. Say, all right, yes, uh, these four regulative principles make sense. I mean, you know, and we've embraced them. And now we go, oh, McDonald's, McDemon, horrible, right? You know, ooh, you know, the Mac monster, right? It's like... Uh, as devotees, we look at that like, like, like as an emblem of horrible, you know. Uh, Colonel Sanders, ooh, he already looks like a chicken. Uh, well, how many millions of births will he have to take in the chicken species? I don't know. 
a long time. So like this, we have embraced uh, vegetarianism and we're all into it. KC, you know. Right? But other aspects we have not quite embraced yet. So there's still more to embrace. So little by little, we embrace more and more of Krishna consciousness. And with it, our love for Krishna will grow. That's how it is. As we embrace yet another way of Krishna conscious conduct, yet another way of offering to Krishna. Yes, I'll make this offering to Krishna also. Then the love in our heart will grow each time. And it never ends. Never goes on forever. How do we become more focused on reading Prabhupada's books? How do we become more focused on reading Prabhupada's books? Okay, I can give a serious answer and make a joke. Huh? I have to put my glasses on, otherwise I can't focus at all. <laughs> <laughs> but in the joke, every joke carries some truth also. So the first thing is, uh, maybe glasses, maybe create somewhere a piece, uh, a, a suitable material creation, uh, uh, condition, uh, some material uh, favorable condition to read. It's 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 hard to read in uh, in, in the kitchen. Yeah. Clung clung. Yeah. It's, it's like you go sit in the middle of the kitchen, read the Bhagavatam. Obviously not. It's not the place for that. Uh, that's not the time. So we need a peaceful place, peaceful time. So where is it? We need to create some peaceful material time conditions, get the glasses if we need them so we can read and so on. Maybe even sleep enough uh, so that we don't, every time we read, start to see double. Um, so there's the material side. We make some good material arrangements. And then, yeah, then we just have to, you know, from, just as from chanting comes more chanting, from reading comes more reading. So that's also there. So we have to just hear more. Maybe, you know, turn on, uh, get some things on the phone, some lectures on the phone, or some e-book, uh, some audio books on the phone, now you get all these audio books coming out, pretty good, you know, I mean, I listen to them, yeah, quite often, turn them on, and it's nice, you just get the book in an in audio form, right, and just by hearing these audio books here and there and everywhere, you get actually a desire to start reading books also, so one thing leads to another, it's a culture, and you have to start it somewhere, it's not that, it's not a decision, and from now on, I promise today, on this Ekadasi, I solemnly swear in front of the deity, the Vaishnavas, and so on, and I touch water before I say it, that from now on, I'll read every day 15 minutes. <laughs> it's, it's tough. It's tough. But if there's a culture, so it, often it's just a matter of somehow or other, Pushing that, that, that one little button on the phone or something like that. Turn on the lecture. Ooh, lift that finger. Push the phone. It's like that. That initial lethargy, you know, that we have to conquer. That we have to conquer. And then when there's a culture of hearing, there will be a culture of reading. Uh. Yesterday I had a nice breakfast with Borija and Prabhu because we spoke about the Bhagavatam. Yeah, that was fun. Just talking about, speaking about Bhagavatam. I threw in a little Chaitanya Charitamrita <laughs> for the mix. It was a nice breakfast. I had some Bhagavatam with a little Chaitanya Charitamrita. I mean, I, I put a little Hansa Dutta on the side just for another taste, and then he brought in the Gopal Champu for dessert. <laughs> it was a great breakfast. Very nice. Best one I had so far in Melbourne. <laughs> mm. So much nectar. All right.
Thank you so much. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai.